This is a video about Revit uh, 2013 MEP and specifically about electrical demand factors. This video is part of uh, doing a uh, setup, uh, the beginning stages, and uh, creating a template. We're going to start, we're going to go to New, and we're going to uh, choose a project template. Our template file, we're going to choose none, and uh, we'll click OK. We're going to choose imperial uh, measurements for this project, and we're ready to go. Uh, so, as part of the beginning setup, uh, in, in working with uh, electrical uh, MEP, there are a number of settings, and uh, the particular one we're going to look at right now is uh, the demand factors. Now under settings, uh, with the size of, if you have this in a much larger screen, you know, you'd see some words on this, but uh, uh, right here we have MEP settings, a little harder to find. I'm going to click on that and we'll see there's electrical settings, we'll get to that one at another time, load classifications and demand factors. Uh, these two uh, work together. So we're going to click on demand factors and this is what we have set up uh, when we uh, start the program without any kind of a template. Uh, we're going to choose uh, the default uh, demand factor, which is 100% uh, demand. And we're going to create a few other ones here. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, creating one for uh, receptacles. And this will use a uh, demand factor. And I'm going to include the uh, code section. First, to this. And for the receptacles, uh, the calculation method is going to be by load and incrementally. And we're going to add one increment here. So for uh, the load at less than or equal to um, 10,000 VA, it'll be 100%. And then once we go over that 10,000, we'll have a demand factor of 50%. And we would have the option of some additional load to the calculated result, which we won't select right at this time. And that's going to give us um, our first uh, demand factor. Now we'll be uh, also doing one here for motors. And the motors, uh, the NEC, there's a group of motors, the largest one gets 125%. And so here, we'll be working with the quantity incrementally. And so for uh, greater than zero, less than or equal to one, the main factor will be 125%. And greater than one, it'll be 100%. And so that gives us our motors. We'll go back into those demand factors again. And this time, uh, we're going to do a uh, continuous loads. And it's going to be uh, pretty much the same as this. And so I'm going to duplicate. And then rename. And All right, and then uh, one more uh, we'd like to do here. And this will be a smaller non-coincident load. This is where you would have two loads that can't uh, operate together. 
uh, some sort of an interlock, uh, something that'd be heating and cooling. You can't do both of them at the same time. And this one is going to be a constant. And the main fact is going to be that that small non coincident load won't even uh, play into the uh, overall uh, demand. So uh, you can't put a value of zero in here. And I'll put a value of 100th of a percent. And basically, uh, that's three demand factor types, and maybe other ones, particularly for uh, residences or apartment buildings, that kind of a thing. Uh, but this will be a starting point. In a uh, future, uh, another video, uh, we'll get into uh, how these uh, demand factors get applied by load classifications. Now we want to save this, and it'll give us the option here since we uh, created it new as a template. Give us the option to say this as a template. And I'm going to save this uh, template. And that will give us a way of uh, having these settings available to us when we start uh, the next video. For further information, see drinkinfrastructure.com.